So as we continue, uh, in many cases, the latter stage of the load settlement curve is almost linear, showing a large degree of settlement for small increment of load as shown in the figure which is represented or illustrated by curve 2. So, the ultimate load Q sub U for such a case is determined from the point of load of the curve of Q versus the settlement that, uh, versus the net settlement where the steep linear portion starts. So, uh, uh, David Swan uh, proposed to obtain the ultimate load Q sub U from the load settlement plot. So, it was David Swan's method. Uh, that is used more often in the field and is described here. So in our figure, uh, 9.28 from this figure, according to Davidson, uh, the ultimate load occurs at the settlement level S sub U, and that is estimated using this equation. And you have here the definition for each variable found on this uh, equations. So this is an illustration for the remolded or compacted zone around the pile driven into a soft clay and the nature of the variation and drain shear strength and of course with time around the pile driven into the soft clay. So we have here the, the compacted zone that is around the pile that is being driven on a certain uh, soft clay type of soil. So for elastic settlement of piles, so if you are going to compute the total settlement of pile under our vertical working load, Q sub U, that is given by this equation, which is equal to the elastic settlement of pile plus elast uh, the settlement of pile caused by the load at the pile tip and the pile tip and the settlement of pile caused by the load transmitted along the pile shaft. So if the material is assumed to be elastic, the deformation of the pile shaft can be evaluated uh, using the fundamental properties of mechanics of materials. We have this equation to compute for the elastic settlement. So basically, for our case of WP, that is the load carried by the pile point under working load condition, case of WS, that is the load carried by frictional skin resistance under working load condition, a sub P is the area of cross section of pile and L is the length of pile. So A sub P refers to the modulus of elasticity of the pile material. And we have to take note that the uh, this uh, value is uh, varies from 0 0.5 and 0 0.67 and depend on the nature of the distribution of the unit uh, friction. So basically, uh, this that was uh, the value for this uh, using this elastic uh, formula for elastic settlement. So the settlement of pile caused by the load carried at the pile point may be expressed in the form. So this is now the settlement of a pile caused by the load carried at the pile point. So you have here the equation. So we have here the different uh, we have your D, which is the width of the diameter of the pile, Q of WP, point load per unit area at the pile point, which is equivalent to Q of WP over A sub P. And E sub S is the modulus of elasticity of soil at or below the pile point. Q sub S is the Poisson's ratio of soil and I is WP, influence factor, which is approximately 0.85. So Vesic, according to Vesic, he also proposed a semi-empirical method for obtaining the magnitude of the settlement. So his equation is equal to this uh, expression. And of course, you have your Q sub P. That is the ultimate point resistance of the pile. This of P is an empirical coefficient. And you have to take note that we have here a table showing to us the typical values of C of P. So basically, we have here the types of soil and we have uh, values for driven pile and board pile. So for settlement of pile caused by the load carried by the pile shaft, this is the equation that you're going to use, where P is the perimeter of the pile, L is the embedment length of the pile, and IWS is the influence factor. So the influence factor can be calculated using this 
equation. So according to Vesic, he proposed this equation. So for this one, C of S is an empirical constant, which is equal to this formula. So the values of C of P that we have used in the previous equation uh, can still be estimated using the table that was presented a while ago. So we have here a sample problem. The allowable working load on a pre-stressed concrete pile, 21 meters long, that has been driven into sand is 502 kilonewton. The pile is, is, is octagonal in shape with D is equal to 356 millimeter. Skin resistance carries 350 kilonewton of the allowable load and point bearing carries the rest. So use is of P which is equal to 21 times 10 to the 6 kilonewton per meter squared is of S is equal to 25 times 10 to the 3rd kilonewton per meter squared and use of S is 0.35 and we are given with this uh, value which is 0 0.62 so determine the settlement of the pile so we simply have to identify our elastic settlement uh, for this one this is the equation so basically from table 9.3 uh, for the diameter for d which is equal to 356 mm the area of the pile cross section is equal to this so our peri perimeter is equal to uh, 1.168 so our given qws is 350 kilonewton so therefore our qwp is equivalent to you have to subtract your qws to the work, allowable working load which is 502 so you get 152 kilonewton so therefore if you try to substitute this given values for this particular parameters we get now our elastic settlement which is 3.55 mm this is the first uh, settlement for the pile so the second settlement that we're going to compute is using this equation so we simply have to uh, substitute our given uh, values um, basically this uh, settlement is equal to 15.5 mm then our third settlement is equivalent to this formula so we try to get first our value for uh, IWS, which is that given. So we have here the equation. So the value is 4.69. So for that, uh, we can get now our uh, third settlement, which is equivalent to 0 0.84 mm. So therefore, if we're going to compute for the total settlement, you simply have to add 0 0.84 plus, plus 15.5 and our elastic settlement which is 3.35 so we get here 19.69 mm so for load uh, we move on now to laterally laterally loaded piles so a vertical pile resists a lateral load by mobilizing passive pressure in the soil surrounding 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 the uh, pile so if we try to uh, the degree of distribution of the soil reaction depends on the stiffness of the pile, the stiffness of the soil, the fixity of the ends of the pile. So in general, laterally loaded piles can be divided into two categories. So basically, we talk about laterally loaded piles, that is a pile that is subjected to uh, lateral forces. So two categories of uh, Laterally loaded piles are short or rigid pile and long or elastic pile. So the figure shown in 9.31 shows the nature of the variation of the pile deflection and the distribution of the moment and shear force along the pile length when the pile is subjected to lateral loading. So uh, for that one, so this is the illustration for a pile. Uh, that is subjected to lateral loading. So this one is the, uh, showing to us uh, nature variation of pile deflection uh, moment and the shear force for a rigid pile and an elastic pile. So this one is a rigid pile. So this is the illustration for pile deflection. So when it that is subjected to a lateral force and it shows to us also as it uh, the shear this is the shear and the moment uh, forces for our uh, rigid pile 
This one is an illustration for an elastic pile. So it shows to us here the deflection of the the pile deflection for laterally a loaded elastic pile. And we have here our shear force and of course our moment force diagram. So this is an illustration for laterally loaded pile for this is the laterally loaded pile. You have Q sub G. Uh, that is the lateral force acting on our pile. So we have here our illustration for the soil resistance on pile caused by the lateral load. This is the sign convention for displacement, for displacement, for slope, for moment, for shear, and soil reaction. So those, uh, this illustrates or the illustrates to us the sign convention for the displacement that it, for a laterally loaded pile for the slope, the sign convention, sign convention for moment, sign convention for shear, and the sign convention for soil reaction. So according to a simpler ring clears model, an elastic medium uh, can be replaced by a series of infinitely closed independent elastic springs. So based on this assumption, uh, you have here the assumption for the modulus of subgrade reaction denoted by K. So P sub prime is our pressure on soil and our X is our deflection. So the subgrade modulus for granular soil at any depth Z can be defined by N of H times Z. So our N of H is the constant of modulus of horizontal subgrade reaction. So referring to our figure, From uh, referring to this figure, uh, using and using, we try to use the theory of beams on an elastic foundation. So we can have this uh, expression that P prime is equal to E sub P, I sub P, fourth derivative of F, X with respect to Z. So of course our X was denoted, as I mentioned a while ago, as deflection. And P sub prime is our pressure in soil. And if we try to have the relationship, uh, we can express that in this form. So I sub P is the modulus of elasticity in the pile material. And our I sub P is the moment of inertia of the pile section. So based on Winkler's model, P prime is equivalent to negative K sub X. So if we try to substitute this, value to this, uh, we can have this uh, expression now. Equate that to zero. So for pile deflection at any depth, so this is the equation. If you're going to get the pile deflection at any depth, so they're going to have this equation. So if you're going to get the slope of pile at any depth, you are going to have this equation. And getting the moment of pile at any depth, so you have this equation also. And if you try to get the shear force on pile at any depth, so this is the expression or equation that you're going to use. And getting the soil reaction at any depth, so this is the equation that you are going to use. So basically, our A sub X, B sub X, A sub O, B sub O, A sub M, B sub M, A sub V, B sub V, A sub P, and B sub P, those are coefficients. And our T is the characteristic length of the soil pile system, which is equal to the fifth root of A sub P, I sub P all over N of H. So when L is greater or equal to 5T, the pile is considered to be a long pile. If L is less than or equal to 2T, the pile is considered to be a rigid pile. So uh, we have definition, we have different values of the coefficient for long piles, which is uh, great L over T greater than 5, that is in table 9.15. And we are given with this equation. So this is a non-dimensional depth. And basically, we have this uh, formula for getting the deflection, the formula for getting the moment at any depth Z. And A sub X prime, B sub X, A sub M prime, and B sub M prime are coefficients. So we have here the table showing to us the coefficient for long piles. Uh, K sub Z, which is equal to 
and some h times z.